deep in the heart of Texas. We're in the business of winning. Don't bet against me. I don't, don't bet anyone. Don't lose anyway. your life. All right, next game. Utah plus seven versus USC. I got to say, outside of maybe the Longhorns, the Aggies, Alabama, and Georgia, I think that for the last two years, we have talked about probably Utah <laughs> more than any other college football team. They, they've just been so solid. And I think I'm just giving up on Cam Rising playing this year. Yeah. I'm not even, I think the Lions have, they've adjusted to, he's probably not playing. Um, Utah has won the last three. Obviously, I think since one was a championship, I think Cam Rising was there for the all three of those last games. Was it um, was it two or three years ago you guys crushed them in a bowl game, or was it the other way around? Utah? Yeah. Didn't y'all play them in Alamo I Bowl? They, like... played, they played Ohio State in that freaking awesome bowl game. Uh, no, I could swear y'all played them like maybe three, four years ago. Maybe it's a little further back than I remember. I could have swore it was like the Alamo Bowl or something like that. Oh, in 2019, it looks like the Longhorns beat them 38-10. That's what I I'm thinking of, yeah. It seems yeah. like from that point, though, Utah Utah had a good year that year, and from the, that point, they've been pretty relevant. Dude, absolutely. They've been – their defense – so Cam Ryan that we know hadn't played all year, right? Uh, they beat Florida, who in and out of the rankings, uh, still a talented team. Uh little down year for Baylor, but still beat them. These are all without their starting quarterback. They beat number 25 UCLA, and they lost a pretty hard-fought match to Oregon State, who, yeah. what are they, ranked about 12th now or something? Yeah, uh, they're pretty high up there. They've allowed 21 points or less in all of their games. They're, uh, they're fifth in the nation, only allowing 12, and their rush defense is second. So Cal's Utah not really a scrub like, either, are they? Seems like no, Cal's Cal, yeah, pretty improved. Cal. Yeah, they had a pretty good win um, against Cal. And then you got USC over here. So, like, Utah's doing everything right, right? They don't have their quarterback. They got one loss. They're battling all these games. They're sound, they're, uh, fundamentally sound. Then you got USC only covered the spread once in a conference game. Um, oh, man, I don't have – oh, yeah, they barely beat Arizona, 43-41. They barely beat Colorado, which is now that uh, – 48-41, which isn't looking so good at this yeah. point. And then they just got smacked by Notre Dame, 48-20. to 20. And, I, yeah, we know that, you know, USC, I think they got the second highest powered offense right now. Uh, but, I mean, you're giving me a touchdown. Utah knows this might be their last shot uh, against them. I'm taking Utah plus seven, and then I'm also taking them as my super dog plus seven. Mm, I like the super dog pick. I think I might like – USC minus seven. Something about that touchdown favorite makes me think it's going to be a big bounce back game for them coming back home. Um, Utah has struggled to score at times. Uh, you know, they beat UCLA. Yeah. They only scored 14 points. Lost to Oregon State. Only scored seven points. Uh, when even, even in their loss or even close games, USC is going to put up points. I just have a feeling they cover that seven coming back at home. Um, I I probably would take I'd probably take USC minus seven. I like the Utah as the underdog bet though because it's definitely mm-hmm. it's definitely like two good teams. They easily could they have more than a puncher's chance to win this right. They're fairly evenly matched all things considered. You would say fourteen and eighteen. Um, you know if it wasn't at USC it'd be like what a four point game so like about a field goal maybe a neutral field or something. Mm-hmm. So I mean, they're relatively easily matched. I like the super dog pick, but I'll take USC minus seven at home. I, I also that over under fifty three. I looked at a lot, and I thought about taking the under just because Utah uh, has not scored at times. But then again, USC's defense is not that good either, and they've been let, letting up a right. lot of points. So my instinct was to go under because Utah could put up a a stinker with only like seven or fourteen points, but. They could also score 35 on USC. So, Yeah, I think I'm trusting more of Utah's defense to hold the game close. So let's say it did get into the 30s. I'm just assuming that USC's lack of defense, meaning even if Utah relied on – they got a good run game with uh, Jaquindon Jackson, I believe. Uh, 
I think they can they can move the ball. I think this is all more reflective on USC's lack of defense and Utah's defense is what's driving me here towards my decision. So that's I guess I'm kind of agreeing that it might go over, but I don't think it's going to be a blowout by USC. I think that Utah can hang in there and um, keep the game keep the game close. Yeah, so Vegas essentially saying this game is going to be thirty to twenty three is what they're saying. Right. Yeah, I don't know, dude. It's another tough one. I really want to watch, but it's a tough spread to gauge. I probably still stick with USC minus seven, but um, yeah, I mean, you're making some good points as well. I just don't. I don't know enough about it, but yeah, I'd probably take USC right. minus seven. I'll stick with that. 